All right, 10 minutes before we say goodbye as we continue the rolling coverage of the situation in Zimbabwe. The latest reports indicating that President Robert Mugabe and his family members are under house for arrest. Let's just take a look at, uh, of course, his uh, political career. Robert Mugabe was born on the 21st of February 1924. His birthplace was the rural Jusid mission of Kutama at Zimba, about 90 kilometers west of Harare, Mugabe, qualified as a teacher at the age of 17. He obtained the first of his many degrees from Forte and UNISA in South Africa. After attending the late Kwame Nkrumah's Pan-African Congress in 1958, Mugabe taught for two years in Ghana. That's also where he met his first wife, the late Sally Hayfron. Back home, Mugabe rose to prominence as Secretary General of the Zimbabwe African National Union, or ZANU. The white minority government of the late Ian Smith arrested several liberation leaders in the early 1960s. Robert Mugabe was jailed for treason between 1964 and 1974. On his release, he joined Zimbabwe's freedom fighters in Mozambique. British mediated negotiations at Lancaster House in London in 1979 led to a peace agreement and new constitution which guaranteed minority rights. They culminated in elections for independent Zimbabwe in early 1980. ZANU emerged victorious and Robert Mugabe became Zimbabwe's first prime minister. President Mugabe was one of the world's longest ruling leaders. He led Zimbabwe from the 18th April 1980 when Rhodesia gained independence from Britain. He initially offered an olive branch to the white minority and introduced much needed social reforms. Zimbabwe's new leader was feted globally for his conciliatory stance towards his former enemies. A comprehensive social program was rolled out in Zimbabwe. It included free primary education and health care, as well as the expansion of roads, electricity and telephone network. But it was also a time of tragedy. In 1982, Joshua Nkomo and his Zimbabwe African People's Union, or ZAPU, were accused of plotting a coup d'etat. Arms caches were found in Nkomo's stronghold of Matebele land, Many suspected apartheid South Africa of fueling the Zapu Zanu Rift. Mugabe unleashed his North Korean trained 5th Brigade in Operation Kukurahundi or Tlinsun Rain. Thousands of Nkomo supporters and alleged dissidents were killed. Didimas Mutasa was a Mugabe loyalist. Robert Mugabe's reconciliatory efforts were challenged in 1985 when several white voters returned to Smith Republican Front to Parliament. Following the so-called dissident period, ZANU and ZAPU signed a unity accord in 1987. It gave birth to ZANU-PF, established one-party rule in Zimbabwe, and resulted in Robert Mugabe becoming executive president with additional powers. In the early 1990s, Zimbabwe adopted the World Bank Structural Adjustment Program to modernize its economy. It entailed conditional funding for development. Within five years, though, the country faced mountain debt. In the late 1990s, Mugabe bowed to pressure from former freedom fighters to pay them millions, including monthly pensions. You will be paid eventually. There is no reason for strikes. It's just that some don't appreciate that they have a government that has given them land, jobs and well-being. They don't want to understand that we too, while fighting for our independence, worked for little monetary reward. The deployment of about 40,000 Zimbabwean soldiers to the DRC drained Zimbabwe's coffers. It also experienced its most violent food droughts following price increases, especially for millimil. All of this led to an emergence of opposition movement for democratic change. The tightly contested March 2008 presidential and parliamentary elections marked a turning point in Zimbabwe's political landscape. Even though Mugabe remained president after two rounds of voting, he was forced into a SADC facilitated power sharing government with the MDC factions of Morgan Tsongarai and Dr. Arthur Mutambara. 
But Mugabe's leadership was tarnished from the early 1980s by the Matebele land massacres, land invasions of white-owned commercial farms, and Zimbabwe's subsequent economic collapse. We have said, even as we acquire our land, we shall not deprive the white farmers of land completely. Every one of them is entitled to at least one farm, but they would want to continue to have more than one farm. More than one farm indeed. 15, 20, 35 farms, one person. These are not figures I am just getting out of my mind. They are real figures. So no farmer is being left without land. The land invasions plunged Zimbabwe economy into free for all. The agricultural sector died. The Brenton Woods institutions stopped lending money to Zimbabwe when it couldn't honor its financial obligations. The International Monetary Fund has never been a fund for the poor peasants seeking sustainable development. Even the United Nations, a body that is supposed to give us equal voices, remains unreformed. All right, that's uh, President uh, Robert Mugabe. Just a little bit of uh, a, a, a look at his career, uh, political career. Well, that's where we'll leave it for today.